here we are. We're in the discussion series of the thought series of Neo Reality Thoughts, where I'm going to cover, as best as I can, the entire reign of CM Punk's 434-day reign, Pete Dunne's 685-day reign, and AJ Styles' 371 to 72 day reign, one video at a time, and I wanted to lay out some groundwork I wanted to establish with this. So, the one thing I am going to do, instead of talking about every single individual match, it will instead be, like, I will talk about a cluster of matches if they're consistently the same opponent, or it would be one special match that only had one opponent or a uniqueness to it that, that was never duplicated again. So AJ Styles' videos might be the shortest. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's start off with the 434-day reign of WWE Champion CM Punk. The beginning of his title reign starting all the way back to Survivor Series 2001, 2011 against Alberto Del Rio. And all the, and not mentioning all the terrible, terrible, terrible things he's been doing in recent years. But that's he neither here nor there because I do not want to talk about it for my sanity's sake and why not cry myself to sleep wondering how our species went terribly wrong. So, the big thing about this match is that Ricardo Rodriguez goes ahead and announces Alberto Del Rio's entrance, uh, you know, the standard Alberto thing because he at the because back then Ricardo Rodriguez was his WWE announcer. Then they split them up years later and then. They told him they couldn't interact with each other ever again in real life because... Because... So... Yeah, but the big moment for it was that... Was that, uh... That CM Punk had his own personal ring announcer. And this was before it came out, but fans were already chanting for CM Punk! CM Punk! Because he was just that over with fans at the time. Uh, especially since this was months after the Pipe Bomb promo and this five-star match with Cena. But the, the biggest thing about this is that his personal ring announcer is Howard the Finkel. Everyone loves the Fink. Uh, his iconic voice, everything about him. He was having tears in his eyes trying to keep himself from crying. And, and fans were chanting, Fink, 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 Fink. And... Yeah, and for fans in attendance, that was a very emotional, iconic moment. However, the commentary does not help much. Like, all they kept doing was making jokes about his weight. Be a star, remember? Let's make fun of the man for his weight that he's been actually trying to lose. Yeah. And Cole was a heel, so so the damage was not as mitigated, but if this was done when Cole was a face, it would have been fucking chaos. But, um, yeah, but he makes a big announcement after several moments of trying to not cry because of the, because the emotion was gained from being Madison Square Garden. And they like to point out that the Madison Square Garden has only changed hands with the WWE title on the line 15 times, and this could be lucky number 16. And this, and this was at a wrestling time where I was just, I was sort of still in the know-how of WWE, but I wasn't at the same time. Like, a lot of my favorites were gone, and the guys I did like were gone, were getting up there at age, and they were leaving, so my emotional connection was just wasn't there as much. The Rock's the reason why I was brought back for wrestling to, to a major extent, because it's The Rock. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so I, I kind of did not look at all this kind of stuff, so it, it's kind of fun for me to look back on things and think, you know, I probably should have loved that much more than I probably should have not given it, should have given the attention it should have gotten. <laughs> like, CM Punk was that guy that made me think, like, the attitude there was coming back because I was that fan who thought everything back then was perfect and everything they're doing now is complete garbage. And whatnot, but even but that was when I was a, a kid in middle school, and I really don't want to talk about that past. If I do, I will go crazy. Okay, anyways, so yeah, what happened was um, th this match between Alberto Del Rio and CM Punk for the title. It was it was fun. Um, really, the problem with this match, besides them constantly insulting Howard Finkel's weight. 
because of course was also the fact that this match was very overshadowed for numerous reasons one del rio's character wasn't really clicking anymore cm punk's character got watered down because of the summer punk stuff wearing went going awry like the losing to triple h which wrecked a lot of momentum and then moving him around to do mid-card stuff for a little bit and then finally give him back the world title run that he so rightly deserved after all those years of work he gave them and all the attention he's given them. But, uh, yeah, that was probably the biggest problem going on. And then the final one was that The Rock was coming back and they had already set the main event for WrestleMania a year in advance. So, yeah, that, it was kind of hard to take the WWE title seriously when it's not the lead marketing thing for the Survivor Series event because this match was going to have, because the show was going to have The Rock and John Cena go go tag team against Awesome Troop, which were a very hot act at the time regarding their Awesome Troop run, which sadly was cut short because of um, our truth got banned for 30 days after this event. And uh, let's talk about that thing. That's for another video when it comes to the idea of what happened in that matchup regarding the inner politics going on that CM Punk addressed in the podcast with Colt Cabana. How, you know, Miz and our truth were blamed for the not as great sales they envisioned. So, yeah. Anyways, as this is going on, uh, as this is going on, so CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio, they were kind of killing it for me. I was watching this match a few days ago. Um, they were killing it on the show, and they, they, they were doing a good match. And then, then, like, we got some close call moments, and I, I and, and like like I said like it seems like looking back on it it seems a lot better and Del Rio was less of an idiot because nowadays heels are portrayed as morons unless you're Bray Wyatt, but um yeah I I like how they had the heel actually not be a coward and have help still but not be a coward character, and so I'm able to appreciate this match more especially for what it led to because we got this very aggressive uh go to sleep a very aggressive uh and a kind of vice del rio scratches and claws at punk's face and he's trying to get out and punk's using all his strength what left of what's left of him and, and he eventually has to succumb to the submission and taps out oh and then howard fink comes back out and announces that punk is the new wwe champion c m punk and Punk takes a dive into the crowd to celebrate, taking his title, and then the cult of personality music plays and runs to the other side, leaves into the crowd, and and then takes his uh, celebration back into the ring before heading back into the, back behind the crowd, and that ends CM Punk's match with uh, Del Rio on its Survivor Series because it, it was it was a pretty good match. Like like I say, it got overshadowed by numerous factors. And I, I do love when he does the Macho Man style bow because it's just so... You got Randy Savage and all that. <sighs> if only we could have gotten CM Punk and Randy Savage in its day when they were when he was in his prime. That wouldn't have actually been a pretty damn awesome match. Probably would have surpassed Ricky Steamboat, probably. But anyways, uh, that's the end of the Survivor Series match. Now let's get to the next part of this match. You see, they would have a rematch eight days later... At Raw, episodes 966, I believe, eight days after the show, and this would be for the WWE title, and this would have the, basically the match where if Punk lose, if Punk gets disqualified or counted out, it's a loss, he loses the title, Del Rio wins it back, because at the time, Punk was also now feuding with John Laurinaitis, to, you know, to recreate Stone Cold and, 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 and McMahon, but that would never happen. Like, as much as Punk is considered compared to Steve Austin, he's not Stone Cold. He's CM Punk. And as much as Laurinaitis, well, actually, I, well, I, I did not care for Laurinaitis. I was wondering, can we move on from this? It's not McMahon. He's not Vince. Shane's gone, so we can't use him. And we can't hit Stephanie with a GTS, even though fans want that. Because societal standards have changed. And plus, this is the PG era, so we can't use that. So... 
hey, we can't do Triple H because he won't put Punk over. So really, we got no one. So why not just dump this whole authority stuff and just focus on Punk having a, a freaking awesome reign with awesome title runs? So with we, great storytelling matches. So yeah, they, they would eventually phase out that that stuff with Punk and Lauren Ideas, but uh, uh, I'll talk about that and then later. But um, yeah. And after, uh, and then like, the you know, punk goes ahead and ha has to defend his title against against uh, Abuja Dario eight days later, and it was a great match as always. CM Punk's a great talent, and Del Rio was a good talent at that time, and wasn't turned into what he's become now, as far as I ever know. But uh. But the highlight of that match specifically were two moments. One, what, well, actually, there's a third one, but that's after the match. One was that Del Rio tried to hit Punk with a chair. Punk caught it. Then Punk threw it to uh, to Del Rio and did the Eddie Guerrero moment and was almost and almost got the win for that. But uh, Punk took his time because and, and tried to pin Del Rio. The other one was when Del Rio tried to get his turnbuckle pad loose and try to expose the metal. The referee stops him, but when the ref sees the chair in Del Rio's hand, he drops it and Punk uses it as the go-to-sleep maneuver with a weapon involved and retains his title. And in a good matchup, it was a good starting point. And finally, he was GTS uh, Ricardo Rodriguez and everything. And the crowd celebrates and goes wild. Uh, so, yeah, that that. So these two matches were solid. A great way to, to end the aristocrat era of uh, of Alberto Del Rio, which lasted for like four months, to finally going ahead and say, let's put the belt on this kid. Let's give him all we need and whatnot. And this would begin the long journey to 434. Two one one for his first title defense, and then we will move on to TLC. But that will be for another video. And there's a personal matter regarding TLC 2011. So yeah, CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio on Survivor Series in 2011, and Raw. This was this was near reality. And if you like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more. And it's Clarence time.